Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Wolf the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the legendary Iron Man Army of Two Run, where we are beating the game on the highest difficulties with, uh, difficulty with only two soldiers per mission. Welcome back guys, uh, it is a pleasure to go through Operation Rotting Rain. Last time we've seen how we could save uh, VIP and today it's going to be yet another terror mission and who could be better equipped than Zirkim and Renvan? Uh, since I saw that we had quite some chrysalids, Renvan is uh, going to go in with uh, Medikit. Um, I'm suspecting that maybe the Assassin will be there, so Mind Shield is never wrong. We do have Grappling Hook and uh, the option to go onto high ground for Zirkim. Keep in mind he has Death from above and this beautiful new gun. Just look at it, it looks so, so good. I like the modeling of the legacy weapons. Two grenades and uh, some blue screen rounds for the mechanical units. There uh, were uh, elite specters and codices. So typical terror mission. I think overall it's going to be a difficult uh, one, usually because we're running out of time. It's another haven assault, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, means that we are going to have civilians on our side, so XCOM um, operatives on the ground that are going to help us, resistant forces to be more precise, and usually they are not so helpful. So let's see if today is going to be the exception. One of our contacts in the resistance says Advent peacekeepers have been spotted conducting a sweep near an outpost in this area. The aliens won't hesitate to kill anyone they find. So we're heading in to protect as many people as we can. Secure the last the uh, terror missions were all very entertaining. So I'm looking forward for this one. And we are going in with uh, Zirkim and Renvan. Aggressively landing down. This time we do Our not have a third person with us. Our people are doing what they can to fight back, but we need to help protect the civilians trapped nearby. There's a group of resistance soldiers hunkered down not far from your position. Move in and help fend off the attacking alien forces. All right. We're going to go... We're going to do exactly that. Did I mention that I absolutely adore grappling hooks? Fast movement for Renman. This here would be a nice position for him. This here would also be a good position. I'm a little bit afraid that we're pulling too, too many aliens from there. On the other hand, Oh yeah, okay, so the map develops into this direction. On the move. Good, perfect. A lot of ground covered. We're going to Overwatch and Overwatch. So let's see where the aliens are coming from. Nice little shot against two Archons. Okay. Enemy is still up. Let's see what the resistance forces have to say. There is an elite specter down there. Not the worst idea to attack it, but it has some mutant friends with it, so maybe it was a pretty bad idea. Yeah, by thinking about it, it was most likely a pretty bad idea. However, a crit for eight means it's an execute. Uh, range. Uh, 
That means it's in execute range, which I really, really like. So, as with most of uh, the uh, encounters, we need to preemptively strike and we need to strike hard. Which means if we're going to go okay, here, okay. all right, so far so good. That's not going to be a kill. This is not necessarily going to be a kill either. But a very high chance to crit, so it's almost going to be a secure kill. Unless it... No, it can't dodge because it's 100% uh, shot. So there is a 70% chance to immediately kill it, plus a 30% chance to deal max maximum damage. So we're looking at uh, more than 80% of uh, killing it, which is good enough for me. Check it before you get too close. This is okay. Uh, we are now untouchable and implacable, so we're moving. The reason why I did that is we can blade storm. And we can also chain shot theoretically. Another option that I could see is teamwork. Giving a teamwork over here and just dealing massive amount of damage. It's probably a good idea. we're not going to move um, Zirkim anyways. We have nothing to fear. Okay, so this here could be a kill once the chain shot is over. 16 to 20 and a pretty decent chance of hitting it. Might as well start hitting the other Archon as well. Plus chain shotting it, which would probably kill it. This Archon here would get a Bladestorm attack, which is very likely to kill it as well. So we are looking at 20-ish damage if both of them hit. And hitting the Archon here is more likely. I'm just thinking, shall we use the Throwing Axe on top of it? The answer is probably... Probably not yet. We can use that once uh, there is some more, some more dangerous stuff going on. So let's start with the Chain Shot and see if we can down this Archon here. Very solid first hit. Unfortunately dodged the second one. Which means, to be honest, might as well just hit it and kill it. We are anyways untouchable. There's the blade storm. Wow, nice little hit. This will be untouchable. Well done. That unfortunately is a kill. Commander, Advent isn't backing off. They've got units in the AO that are ignoring our forces just to get a better shot at the civilians. Take those bastards down. Yeah, unfortunately, 
our troops are incompetent as always but we're doing fine so far we're doing very well so far to be honest might as well use the plasma grenade to get rid of his cover and then kill him and then uh, continue with uh, with uh, hitting the Archon. That's the most logical play. Salvo means we can um, flop a grenade and then shoot afterwards. Death from above will allow us to kill him and actually act again afterwards. Oops. There we go. And this here is going to just continue the killing spree, softening it up for a kill. Good. And that's a perfect setup because now we can reload, take a shot, kill him. That'll trigger Implaceable and even hair trigger, which is great. What's over there? I know he was like just back there, so might as well go for run and gun. Position ourselves in full cover. Should have used the cover right next to it for a flanking opportunity. 85%. This is a starter. 70% for two shots is better though. So let's use rapid fire. And hopefully we kill him. First shot. And there we go. It's dead. It has to be dead. The resistance team is in the clear. They're moving to help the other survivors. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range of your position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. We need to get in there before the aliens slaughter those people. Okay, so far so good, guys. We are on a solid track. I am surprised how much firepower these two guys have. A couple of chrysalids over here is the bad news. We definitely need to get rid of them. The berserkers, I'm not afraid about them at all. The chrysalids, however, are a real issue. Let's use conceal. Because there is no disadvantage of uh, doing so. Getting it done. Taking a good look. Moving to position. Spotting nothing. Probably going to uh, move and reload. Oh, yeah. We do have high ground here, which is nice. But we should still be careful. I mean, we know it's 15 enemies. 14, uh, sorry. 14 enemies, and we just killed two Archons. Basically two Mutants and um, an Elite Spectre. So that means nine more enemies to go. If they kill the Berserk, it's eight. But still, point remains. That's a bad idea. That's a very bad idea, guys. Oh, I'm surprised. They almost got the Berserk down. I 
Affirmative. Moving out. And we're going to use the grapple right over here. Moving on target location. Just to grapple onto the house. Deploying grapple. So this here. Spots out the chrysalids and the berserk. Love it. You can kill the berserk. Easily with death, death from above. And the chrysalids need to be really properly set up. Problem with them is if we don't get rid of all of the walls down here, it's gonna be a very, very painful exercise. So, is the wall actually removable? I sincerely hope so because we need we need uh, Renvin to clean up. Six to eight, six to eight. Hmm. All right, that's going to be a kill. They've seen me. That's fine, they can see you. That's not a problem. You being out of ammunition, that's a problem. I them. Or a chrysalid killing someone, that is a problem. Yep, that is a problem. Can't believe that they are actually killing the the uh, codices. That's great. This, on the other hand, is not great at all. I'm trusting you here. Need to get rid of uh, the cocoon. So let's chain shot it. Luckily for us, we can deal a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. we could take some high ground where we could actually see it this here is not bad because with the high ground we are able to kill it and act again next turn uh, act right away because of the death from above Of course not if uh, we're not instantly killing it, but it's good. That way we're at least preventing any spawn from happening.
Very nice. We do have quite a sizable army left over, which means there are a lot of shots happening. Like it. Don't do that. All right, good job. All right, let's move closer. This here is a good position. 100% chance to hit it. Very solid kill. Gives us death from above, so we can go into Overwatch. There is a Berserk right here. Running and gunning. I think it's a good time for us to move in. No need to ask twice. And at least take a shot. Couple of mutants, that's fine as well. I don't mind. Let's kill the Codex, that way we are triggering Untouchable and Implaceable. We're going to go to here, really solid position to go into the next room here, and just flank them, and it's also full cover. I guess that'll be okay. Plus we're untouchable, so... That's good in any way. Overwatch for Zirkim. Yeah, we are losing some civilians now. There's the untouchable. Alright, let's take a couple of shots. Oh, come on. That's a very solid shot, I like it. Because it sets him up to be, uh, to be killed. Likewise, Lee, with this guy. Codex is down. Okay, perfect. Okay, hmm. We have untouchable, but we don't have unplaceable. Is there any way how we could use high ground in order to take shots into this room? Probably not. We could go to here, take a shot, kill one of the mutants, and just use the untouchable for now. 
There are two mutants and a berserk, two, uh, two mutants, two berserks left. And we need to skim them down like this round effectively. Saturation fire would be nice. But that requires a reload. And we don't have enough time for reload. You can only grapple to here. That's a bummer. We do not have any uh, teamwork ability left. I think this is still the best move. Like I said, he's untouchable. We need to reload. There's no other way around. And unfortunately with Slash, we're still not strong enough to kill them. The mutant can retaliate, so we are definitely not going to attack him in melee. Positioning ourselves here, however, would be nice, because it would trigger Bladestorm, and that means the mutant is going to die. Um, there's a disadvantage, uh, a disadvantage, though, because it also means that the other Berserk can directly attack us, which we wouldn't want. We of course do not have run and gun anymore, which stinks a little bit. And I wish we could see some of them, but we can't. So I don't want to go to here because these here might be faceless ones. It's very likely because we only have a couple more civilians left over. So we're going to go for Overwatch and leave it. Leave it like this for the point uh, for the time being that's the untouchable that's the antivirus scanner thank you Another mutant down. And the resistant forces are actually dealing quite a substantial amount of damage. I love it. I love it. Moving over. Let's kill the Berserk. It's dead. It has to be dead. Implacable will allow us to go in all the way. Ready to engage. This here could might as well kill him right away. Right. Easy. There's the faces one I was talking about. Not a big surprise to be honest. So we're moving in since we do have untouchable. Move all the way up there. So that will trigger a blade storm. 
Nice little hit. What a bloodbath. Two dead mutants, berserks. Gosh, that was surprisingly straightforward, but yet a lot of fun. It was just go, go, go all the time. Could have played it better in the second half. I feel I mismanaged the cooldowns just a bit in, in the midst of the fight. I was um, seeing that all of the cooldowns were down and it's really not um, the 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 position that you find want to find yourself in. XCOM has a lot to do with momentum, and one way of comparing it maybe is snooker or billiard. Uh, so pool billiard. Um, if you're not only trying to kind of solve the current um, the current problem, you're trying to uh, to already set up. Um, for a proper next turn. So if you're using a cool a cooldown, you, the question in your mind should always be what does that mean on the next turn? And is it really worthwhile using it? And I've, I've uh, shown that in the last mission when I was also thinking about uh, whether or not I want to blow the, the axe right away or if I want to keep it. And my thought process was, you know what, we haven't found the chrysalids and usually chrysalids come in pairs or even uh, with three of them. So we might find ourselves in a sticky situation where that is better than uh, just fighting uh, with an Archon. Uh, so it, that, in fact, um, had, um, had been true. And I feel at the very end of the mission, I did not necessarily do it super well. Grenade and ammunition is a perfect starter. We are victorious, and, the cause is a and that means plus one mobility, and we do have modular um, cannons. Next time we do have a breakthrough that allows us an additional modification slot. Perfect. Let's see what else we can do. I think we wanted to go for the 14 days uh, mission to get more info about the um, the Templar, not the Templar, uh, the Warlock, sorry. And I think since we are looking for additional health again, that's either Roby or Hogbite again. And I guess since we're using Dodge on Hogbite, might as well use health on Roby so that Roby gets the highest amount of potential health. We don't want anyone to be captured. So there is a low chance that someone's getting wounded, but that's okay. Okay, the stronghold, uh, Roby will take the plus one health, and it is actually a pretty good mission. The covert action immediately, Commander. So we got ourselves an acid grenade, which is one of my favorite ones. It's really, really good for shredding. And Venom Rounds, which I like even more than the uh, incendiary uh, rounds. So very solid. Oh, that's a, a bonus supply rate. Yeah, we're going to go for it. Because that's Alarium and Alloys and Experience. And the bonus mission is wonderful. You can definitely use it. There's our Wrath suit. And we also need to make contact. Gosh, so many things at once. Alien facility coordinates locked in, Commander. Okay. Okay. 
So before we go for the supply raid, let's continue making contact. Setting course for the Mexican regional draft. Or let's almost finish it. How many days until... Uh, somewhere way more than 10 days until oh no wait eight days until the supply drop so since the research of and and the activity of the chosen ones happens at the end of the month i will almost finish this to the point where it's almost done wait for month end and just because i don't want to discover just because i don't want to discover the third chosen one and immediately give him a an opportunity to act okay very difficult mission 11 enemies means we're going to run into a chosen for sure and a lot of beast like creatures sucks because uh, beast like creatures means a lot of chrysalids and that's a bad mission setup uh, what's the What's the dark event? There is a risk of ambush on all covert uh, actions. That's actually not a problem. It just means extra XP. Increased cost uh, of recruits by 100% for a month. That's really not an issue as well. 93 Intel is okay. An engineer. We don't need engineers anymore. And a hidden event. Hmm. I'm almost thinking whether we want to go for the uh, field commander because that's such a such an easy mission plus we do have losses in here which means we can um, we can upgrade the experience quite a bit Yeah, I think I think that we're going to do this mission here. So, anyways, whilst I'm preparing it, so uh, that we can directly jump into it uh, during the next session, I want to say thank you for watching this run. I'm going to prepare all of this uh, behind the scenes so we're not wasting any time. In the meantime, don't forget to click the uh, like and uh, subscribe button if you haven't done that so far. Uh, that helps the channel and uh, we have already crossed 500 subscribers so i'm mildly proud about the growth thank you so much have a great evening and see you very soon bye bye